Hey guys! In this episode of Archana Thursday, we're going to play around with gouache while painting beautiful sunsets. If you don't know what gouache is, I made a whole video talking about the differences and similarities between watercolors, gouache and acrylic paint. I will have a link in the info card and the description box down below so you can check it out. So to create the sunset paintings, I will be using gouache by the brand called Schmincke in the colors cyan, magenta and primary yellow and also white and black. But of course you can use any other brand that is available to you. Now I'm still fairly new to gouache, that's why I wanted to start with something that will allow me to play around with the paint and its application to just get familiar with the medium first before moving on to something more detailed. For the first painting I wanted to create a slightly turquoise and peach colored sky so I mixed a little bit of yellow and blue gouache together and then played around with the amount until I was happy with the shade and then I added a little bit of white gouache to just soften the color. Now remember that light shades dry darker and dark shades dry lighter when it comes to gouache. So if you want to make the sky really bright, I would mix a shade that is slightly lighter than you want your result to be. Another thing to keep in mind is the amount of water and paint you're using. So here I tried to apply a thin layer of blue paint to the upper part of the paper and then did the same with a rather peach colored shade that I created by mixing a little bit of red, yellow and white gouache. The reason why you don't want to use too much paint is that if you apply a too thick layer, the paint might crack later. To add the clouds to the sky, I add a little bit more red to the mixture to make it darker and then apply the paint in horizontal lines while leaving out some space in between. And for the brighter areas, I added a little bit of yellow on top. But here comes the plot twist. I actually felt like starting over because I was just not feeling it and I think it was just due to the fact that I'm not used to painting with gouache and I didn't really know what look to expect but that's the problem right here. I think if you're new to a medium, don't be afraid to play around with it. To be honest, even the second painting I was working on, in the end I was like, I need to start over. But I didn't want to pretend that it never happened so I included the two first attempts into the video to show you guys how I actually made it work in the end. And as you know I always preach that it's all about the process and you learn so much by just playing around and by experimenting with your paint. So even if you don't like the result, think about why you don't like it. Is it the composition? The colors? What could you do differently next time? So don't beat yourself up. You're not failing, you're learning. While the first painting was drying, I moved on to the second painting. Here I mixed this nice orange pink color and applied it to the middle part of the paper and then went ahead to add darker shades around it and on top of the first layer. I mixed different colors from a grayish blue to just black and then tried to create the clouds in diagonal motion this time to create another perspective. I applied thick and thin lines rather randomly while leaving out some space in between. And at some point I was like, okay, what am I even doing here? Everything just turns into mud, so at the point, as I said earlier, I thought I would just stop and start over with a new painting. But I decided I would just accept the fact that it didn't turn out the way I hoped it would be to give me freedom to just play around with it. So I was like, okay, let's add a little bit of this shade here and this shade there. Maybe mix a little bit of this color here and I just played around with it. So instead of leaving this muddy gray color and giving up, I tried to add colors on top that will look great on top. So such as light blue, yellow. And for the first painting, I kept it rather simple and just blended some yellow and pink color to the lower part and painted dark tree silhouettes below. If you have a certain idea of what your end result should look, you might end up being disappointed if it doesn't turn out the way you wanted it. 
I think if you give yourself the freedom to just develop your painting as you go while having maybe just a slight idea or a slight concept of what you're going for without any specific end result in mind, I believe you will more likely end up liking your painting because it will be something you didn't expect and you might be even surprised with the end result. If you don't have expectations, it's more difficult for you to be disappointed. And that's what I wanted to do in my next paintings. I don't really want to give you guys a detailed step-by-step -step instructions in this video because I just want you to take your gouache and just paint. I don't want to give you guys certain restrictions or guidelines, I just want to give you an idea and encourage you guys to play around and to experiment with your paint. That's why it's called our journal where we capture our process and how we evolve. So look up sunsets or even sunrises on the internet and try to recreate a few similar color shades for your painting and then just recreate the mood. Not necessarily trying to copy the whole photograph, just get the feel for different color combinations, what colors look great together and then you can play around with the brush strokes. Add thick and thin lines horizontally, vertically, add different colors on top of each other to create an interesting and unique pattern. And during the process you might notice, oh, this area is a little bit too dark, I think. Maybe I should add a few brush strokes here and there. Just have fun. To be honest, it was in the middle of the night when I was filming this video and I was so obsessed with gouache all of a sudden because I felt like so happy painting all these sunsets because I didn't have any expectations. I just had these beautiful colors and I mixed them together, tried to make it work somehow and I was so surprised how it turned out. I even messaged Holly and I was like, look, it's so amazing, I can stop painting and that's what I want for you guys. And if you're wondering how much paint and water I used, I tried to keep the paint rather creamy by adding just a little bit of water. I didn't want to have the same consistency as watercolors, but also not as heavy as some heavy acrylic paints. Just creamy enough to be able to blend the paint and making sure the layers won't crack eventually because I applied the paint too thickly. So you can start with a thin layer and if you, for example, want to change things or add things, there is still room to adjust. But it's also something that needs practice. I think if you're just starting out, focus on just a few aspects you want to work on and do that. It's okay if you still make mistakes in other areas. If you have too many things at once that you want to practice on, it might be too overwhelming and you'll lose the fun. So here, as I said earlier, I rather wanted to focus on blending colors and the paint application to see what I can create. I really liked how vibrant the lighter colors looked on top of the darker shades and it was so much fun blending different colors together to create a unique shade and texture. As you can see, I only had three main colors in addition to black and white and I was able to create so many different shades and moods in the paintings. So you can buy just a small set of gouache and just focus on blending different colors and maybe even create a chart and observe how the colors look when they are dry because it can look really differently to what they looked when they were wet. And then just play around. I, I think I repeat myself, but it's really important just to experiment and play and don't feel like you're wasting your materials. The cool thing about traditional gouache is that you can reactivate the paint with water or with new paint when you apply a new layer. Or you can remove as much paint as you can and start over with a new layer. So you don't really have to hurry and be stressed like you might be with acrylic paint because it dries too quickly and then you can't really do much when the paint has dried, only painting over. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see a proper step-by-step -step tutorial next time and if you do, let me know in the comments what exactly we should paint or practice together so I know what to focus on next time. For some reason, the removed washi tape also looked like a painting on its own, so I added the strips to my art journal next to the first two paintings I created, which I, by the way, actually liked in the end. Don't give up just because you had an idea and it didn't turn out the way you imagined it. Rather see this as a relief because now you have the freedom to experiment and to be excited about the process because you don't know what to expect. And isn't this one of the reasons why creating art is so much fun? For a more step-by-step -step gouache tutorial, you can check out the video right here. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching guys, have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye!